Tonight on Q2, paving the way to civilization. They've been pretty much nonstop during daylight hours. Roundup residents come together to build a new road in just three days. Plus, speeding things up. Everything I sell is all through social media and my website. If the internet's not working for you, you know, you just, you're going to lose out. You're going to lose out on that, on that business. Brule broadband internet may soon be faster than ever. We'll tell you why that's so important. And one well-known Billings man recovering after a scary situation. About the third day, he came in and he, and he said, do you want to know what happened to you? We'll tell you that answer. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. We'll get to those stories in just a minute. But first, Montana's attorney general raising the alarm tonight when it comes to elder abuse scams. And law enforcement fears those scams against seniors are only becoming more advanced in large part because of artificial intelligence. Our David J introduces us to one woman who's sharing her story of being victimized in hopes of helping you. A Billings woman avoided some potential elder abuse fraud when she thought she had received a text from her pastor at Shiloh United Methodist Church. The person had asked her to purchase some gift cards. She stopped that and along the way learned some lessons that can help others avoid fraud. It's a plea that could capture anyone. Judy Frank received a text several years ago from a man she believed was her pastor asking for gift cards to help a couple he was supposedly counseling. So she went to Elberton's and purchased three of them at $100 each. It was only after she called her pastor that she realized she'd been scammed. And I say, I have your gift certificates for you. And he said, gift certificates? I didn't ask for any gift certificates. Fortunately, Frank was able to return to Albertsons, which helped her cancel the cards. I thought I was pretty astute with that sort of thing, but this one really nailed me. That was five years ago. Her pastor, Tyler Amundsen, is now the executive director of Big Sky Senior Services. Elder abuse takes away people's livelihoods and their lives. It causes mental health issues for folks. It causes emotional and other kinds of neglect to happen in their lives, and they receive abuse that they do not deserve. Amundsen spoke at Stockman Bank Thursday, where Montana's Attorney General Austin Knudsen talked about a law passed in the legislature this past session, providing liability shielding to banks, credit unions, and financial institutions if they put suspicious transactions on hold. They are master manipulators, and they're very fast talkers. Knudsen says criminals are getting even more clever, using artificial intelligence to clone the voices of grandkids and loved ones to make scams targeting the elderly even more believable. If you've put a clip of your voice out there on social media or on the internet, that can be grabbed now and be replicated within an artificial intelligence, and you can make that AI sound like your voice. As for Judy Frank, she now has her own way of handling those suspicious calls. You just say, well, you, I'll call you back, and that takes care of the problem. And she hopes her story will help others avoid what she experienced. These are our most vulnerable, but these should be our most respected, dignified citizens in the state. They've earned that. We want to make sure they're protected. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Today, the U.S. Supreme Court delivered a major victory to Indian country, the high court ruling to uphold the constitutional legality of the Indian Child Welfare Act in the case of Holland versus Bracken. The decision comes after more than 500 tribal nations came together to participate in the case. In a 7-2 vote, the court turned away a series of claims seeking to invalidate parts of the Indian Child Welfare Act enacted in 1978 to keep Native American children within tribes. Those in support of ICWA say it's crucial for the safety and well-being of Native children and families, as well as the future of Native peoples and tribal nations. Coalition of teachers, parents, and statewide advocacy organizations have filed a lawsuit challenging one of two recently passed charter school laws. The complaint states the law is a violation of the Montana Constitution's guarantee of educational equality for all students. Now, according to the Montana Free Press, the lawsuit was filed by the nonprofit Upper Seven Law on behalf of 10 plaintiffs. The plaintiffs are seeking an injunction to block House Bill 562 from going into effect on July 1st while litigation proceeds. That bill would create what it calls community choice charter schools and a new state commission under the Board of Public Education that could authorize and oversee them. Republican Representative Sue Vinton of Billings sponsored that bill.
High temperatures across the state ranged anywhere from 73 at Jordan all the way down to 57 at Butte. So a wide combination of temperatures out there throughout the day, depending on the clouds and things like that. Hazards we have to worry about yet tonight. We still have a flood advisory down in uh, Sheridan, Wyoming. Uh, some runoff from uh, yesterday's rain still uh, leaving things high down there. But the bigger story, the flood watch through Friday, 6 p.m. across a good portion of Wyoming for rains that are going to fall tonight into tomorrow morning. So again, pay attention if you uh, have friends and family down in that way. Things we're going to talk about later in the show, warmer each day, nice days Friday through Sunday. Uh, afternoon and evening thunderstorms return Monday through Wednesday and turning cooler Monday through Wednesday. We'll have the details later in the show. A road leading several Roundup residents back to civilization is nearly complete. Those residents, as we heard just a few days ago, have been cut off from the town for nearly two weeks after flash flooding washed away their private road. And now with no help coming from the county, one group has stepped up to build a new road in just a few days. Our Haley Monaco explains how it all came together. At the beginning of this week, this road didn't exist, but it's now the new log cabin road. After floodwaters washed the road, once located right over there, away. Regaining access to freedom hasn't been easy. I don't think it can get too much worse. For two weeks, residents have been working night and day to rebuild log cabin road that was washed away during flash flooding. We first showed you what this road looked like on Monday. Three days later, it's hardly recognizable. I am on the temporary road, <laughs> not quite ready for vehicles, um, four-wheelers, side-by-sides, and obviously the big equipment. The community is solely responsible for paying for the road repairs because it is a private road. The seven families who use it to get to their homes have already spent around $10,000 to fix it. They've been pretty much nonstop during daylight hours. With no help from the county and very few donations, residents credit much of the great progress to a group that makes up half of their small community. The Amish community here um, out at Bender, Log Cabin and Kelly, they have been amazing. And these guys are working wide open all day and when one has to leave, another one takes his place in the saddle. Without the help of the Amish community, many don't think they would be as far as they are, with an end to their nightmare finally in sight. They have the construction knowledge and have put this road in so people can get out. And we are very, very thankful for their expertise and their willing to help everybody that are, is not in their family and community. So that's huge. And they've done a stellar job. In Roundup, Haley Monaco, MTN News. The City of Billings has a new Director of Parks, Recreation and Public Lands. That new director is Mike Pig, who is moving up from his role as Park Supervisor. Pig competed against more than 30 applicants for the position. With his promotion, he's launching a free summer program for kids called Rec2U. The goal is to help kids stay busy this summer while having a positive impact on the community. It runs every Friday during the summer and starts tomorrow. And you can find out more information about the program on billingsparks.org. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, a longtime Billings sportscaster putting his heart into recovery. We'll hear his story next. Plus one cancer survivor is raising eyes by helping others fighting the same battle. And faster internet may soon be on the way to rural Montana. We'll have the details coming up in just a bit. Q from Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. One man who's been in the public eye here in Billings for 40 years is now just happy to be back at work after being diagnosed with a rare heart condition. Our Casey Conlon has the story in tonight's Your Health Matters. Behind these windows is a gym most don't ever want to work out in. It's the Cardiac Rehab Center here at St. V's, and it's where longtime sports anchor Chris Byers has been building up his strength for the last three months after basically being in a coma. How's your chest been feeling? Good. Good. Okay. This is Lynn. She's been one of the three most important people in Chris Byers' life recently. Breathe in. Good. She said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to go back to work and I want to start playing golf and I want to work in the yard. And she goes, I can get you there. She has. Byers was back at work last week and graduated from rehab Wednesday. Yeah. Pretty remarkable turnaround considering where he was in March. 50-50 chance of being dead within two years. 
Late last year, Byers was diagnosed with aortic stenosis. It's a disease of the heart valve. He had two choices, the less invasive TAVR or open heart surgery, which he wanted no part of. Until he met Dr. Simon Malte, number two most important. Some doctors said, well, I'm not going to tell you what to do. The first thing that Dr. Malte said to me, he goes, I'll tell you what to do. He goes, get surgery. Malte, in his second year with St. V's, performed a new minimally invasive open heart procedure, but during surgery found Byers had a rare condition where fluid was developing in his lungs, so he had to put Byers in a coma-like state and let technology do its magic. The usual pathway of these patients was to save their life with their device and then send them out of state for higher level of care. That's the key to this story. Many studies show a patient who gets to stay close to home will always have a higher rate of recovery. And Malte was determined to keep buyers here. It wasn't a light decision that came from all the way up. It took a bit of political capital as well. For the family, um, it, it, it's, it's huge. Here's number one for buyers, another Lynn, his wife. Having the family around him was huge for us because we could see him and deal with everything hourly, daily. After five days, buyers woke up and Dr. Malte was there to explain everything he'd been through. Just more reason buyers knew he'd found the right man. I know the tendency is I'm going to look everywhere for the number one surgeon I can find at the number one hospital. I did the same thing. What's incredibly amazing is what's right in your backyard that you don't even know. We love seeing you guys get better. It's awesome for us. In Billings, Casey Conley, MTN News. Relay for Life is just a few weeks away. The annual event draws hundreds of survivors, warriors, and caregivers each year. It's a night that can often lead to unlikely bonds as they join in the fight to beat cancer. Tonight, our Diane Parker introduces us to one survivor now looking to give back in a unique way. Inside this billing salon is a breast cancer survivor who's giving back via free permanent eyebrows for other survivors. It's her way of offering a little bit of hope and a big boost of confidence. I want to be able to give back to these ladies the chance to feel like they're feminine, feel like they're beautiful again. Here we go. The hair loss can be just devastating for many, many women. Women like Patty Means of Lame Deer, who went years without eyebrows, drawing them on daily. 13 years I had uh, mammograms, and the 14th year it came back positive. I didn't have a, a lump at all, I couldn't even feel it, but it showed up. I had triple negative breast cancer. That was 2016, but in 2022, her life changed as her husband watched Q2's annual Pink Breakfast Morning Show dedicated to breast cancer survivors. Right away, I got her phone number and called her up. Patty here, when she came to me, she had no eyebrows whatsoever. She showed me what she wanted. I just, I see her walking in, and I was just ecstatic to see her with eyebrows and the smile that she had. The custom brow experience takes Athena a few appointments Appointments and touch-ups over the years, all free of charge for any breast cancer survivor. I was real self-conscious about my eyebrows and how I used an eyebrow pencil. And now I look in the mirror and they look great every day. I was just amazed that she would do something like this for, for people like me, cancer survivor. From my standpoint, going through chemo and the medications that I take for my cancer, I have hair loss, hair thinning, and I know the feeling. I just want to help. Athena is changing lives one survivor at a time, but she's also amplifying her message about breast cancer awareness on a new stage as Mrs. Billings, Montana, 2023. My platform was breast cancer research and awareness so that we can try to help to fight uh, breast cancer from even becoming a thing. If that wasn't enough, she's volunteering as the experienced co-chair for Yellowstone Relay for Life. Of course, we want to be able to raise money to help research. Something the local relay does as one of the top 10 fundraisers worldwide, consistently raising a half a million dollars each year. A woman changing lives in more ways than one. In Billings, Diane Parker, MTN News. Registration for Relay for Life is now open, and anyone who registers by June 15th gets a free T-shirt. The main event kicks off July 14th at West High Track with a survivor lap and opening ceremonies at 645. Survivors are invited to a separate celebration July 13th from 4 to 7. That's at the Masonic Temple. 
Keith's joining us again and a little bit cooler out there today. Yeah, cooler and the skies this evening are a little grayer out there. So I actually went back to Tuesday night to find it, a more colorful picture to show. We'll have details on the changing forecast after the break.